Hey guys, today we're going to go into an introduction of moles and um, this is um, formally an introduction to a branch of chemistry called stoichiometry which is basically um, a way to count things um, in chemistry. So um, consider the words we use to count in our everyday lives. So when I have a pair of, you know, a pair of shoes or a pair of pencils, I have two of those, right? If I have a dozen of something, that's 12. So the word mole is nothing more than a number. It just happens to be a really big number. So if I have a mole of pencils, I'm going to have six followed by 23 zeros, that many pencils. Yeah. I know this um, topic is frequently um, a topic that people find confusing, so I'll try as much as possible to demystify um, the mole. Right, so um, let's jump right into an application of the mole in a chemical equation. So we'll look at a very famous process called the Haber process, where I take um, some nitrogen and react it with some hydrogen and I get some ammonia. So hopefully by now um, you already know how to balance chemical equations. If not, you can take a look at my video on balancing chemical equations. So basically what this equation says is that if I have a molecule of nitrogen, let's make that blue. So here's my nitrogen. So a molecule of nitrogen consists of two nitrogen atoms covalently bonded together. If you're rusty on covalent bonding or um, are not sure why nitrogen has to be diatomic and it can't exist alone, um, go back and take a look at my videos on covalent bonding. It has to do with the stability of the outer shells. Right, and then this one says I'm going to have three molecules of hydrogen and all of that reacted together is going to give me two molecules of ammonia and ammonia is one nitrogen with three hydrogens attached onto it so let me just name these that's my nitrogen that's hydrogen and that is ammonia, right? So what this equation is saying is, it's saying, right, what it's saying is, if I have one molecule of nitrogen, that's gonna react with three molecules of hydrogen, and that's going to give me two molecules of ammonia, right? So likewise, if I had, you know, let's say 10 molecules of this, that's going to react with 30 molecules of that. That's going to give me 20 molecules of that. So all I've done is multiply that by 10. Now I could, of course, multiply 1, 3, and 2 by any number I wish and um, the equation would still hold. So how about I multiply this by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Now how many molecules of hydrogen am I going to need? Well I'm going to need that many times more because um, well three times more than that number because um, the ratio is 1 to 3 so I'm going to need 18.066 times 10 to the 23, you can check my calculation on that, hopefully it's correct. And that's going to give me twice as many molecules of ammonia as the molecules of nitrogen that I have. And that's since I have 6.022 times 10 to 23 molecules of nitrogen, 
um, that's going to give me 12.044 times 10 to the power 23 molecules of nitrogen. And once again, um, you might want to ver verify my calculations on that, right? Now, this number is huge and unwieldy, right? So I like some convenient way of writing them down and that's where the mole comes in handy because it so happens that I've chosen a number of molecules to represent one mole of nitrogen here, right? I mean, instead of saying 12, I could say a dozen. So instead of saying 6.022 times 10 to the power 23, I could say one mole. And instead of saying 18.066 times 10 to the power 23, I can say three moles. And instead of saying 12.044 times 10 to the power 23, I can say two moles. So a mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen and two moles of ammonia. Well, so what, you ask, right? Why, why do we need to call, you know, why, why can't we just say molecules? Why, why do we need moles? Right? So it turns out that because atoms are so light, um, it doesn't make sense in the lab, right? We, we can't really measure the mass of one molecule of nitrogen. I mean, um, we don't have an instrument that sensitive to be able to measure you know, our reaction in terms of the number of molecules. So we need an appreciably large number of molecules or atoms to be able to um, measure things in grams in using the uh, weighing scales that we have in our labs and, and hence um, number of moles, right? Now, even so, um, counting atoms is not feasible in the lab, right? So um, counting is not really possible in the lab. But instead, what we can do, what we usually do in the lab is we tend to weigh our reagents, right? We weigh our chemicals. We can do that feasibly. Um, we can do that using a weighing scale, etc. right? So wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to convert between moles and masses easily, right? Then we would be able to predict our reactions based on their masses and not by counting the number of atoms which they have, which is essentially what moles is. Moles is essentially um, counting the number of molecules or atoms, which we, we can't really do, right? So it turns out that there is a way and it turns out that that is the reason why we've chosen this strange number. So let's take a look at this seemingly mysterious number. This number actually, um, there's actually a reason why we chose this number called the mole. Or you can also call it Avogadro's constant because Mr. Avogadro was the person who discovered it. Well, it turns out that there is a basis for this number and the basis is carbon isotope number 12, right? So remember, just a quick review, what is carbon isotope number 12? It is an atom with six protons. That's what this bottom number is. And six neutrons. And remember how I get six neutrons. They take the top number, subtract the bottom number, and you get six neutrons, right? So this is a very common organic atom, which was um, maybe why they chose carbon-12 as, um, as the benchmark. I'm not sure if you know, maybe you could post it in the comments below why carbon-12 is chosen as the benchmark, right? So it turns out that one mole of carbon-12, right? This is just another way of writing carbon-12, right, those are equivalent, um, has a mass of exactly 12 grams, 
right? So um, we've chosen that based on this. So if you were able to sit there and count up this many carbon atoms and you were to weigh it, you would find that it is exactly 12 grams. I'm not clear on the details as to how Mr. Avogadro actually went into doing that. I'm sure it's a very interesting experiment which you could read up on. Right, so, um, well, that's, that's fine, but how does that help me with this equation? Well, it turns out that this number works magic not only for carbon-12, but for every element in the periodic table. Because if you look at the mass number, right down here on my periodic table, if I look at my key, my average atomic mass is down at the bottom. It may differ on your periodic table, so check your key to um, identify which one gives you the mass number or the average atomic mass. So if I look over here at carbon, I will see that, well, it's almost about 12 because of the presence of isotopes. It's uh, not exactly 12, but if you average it over the isotopes, you get about 12 grams, right? If you ignore the decimal places for carbon. So what this is, is, is it tells you that one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams. And because um, everything is measured relative to carbon, you can trust that these numbers down here will give you the masses of one mole of each of these elements as well. So if I look at nitrogen, a mole of nitrogen weighs 14 grams, right? So that's really convenient. So nitrogen has an atomic mass of 12. What this means is that one mole of nitrogen atoms has a, excuse me, has a mass of 12 grams right and likewise I can say the same thing for hydrogen over here every mole of hydrogen has a mass of one gram um, and so using that I can um, figure out the masses in my reaction yeah, so let's go back to my reaction so here's the reaction I have here I'll just write it down again I have nitrogen plus three hydrogens gives me two ammonia. Yep. So let's take a look at that again. I said over here that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to give me two moles of ammonia. Now, one mole of nitrogen, how much does that weigh? I mean, what's, what's the mass of one mole of nitrogen? Well, I know that one mole of nitrogen atom weighs, oh, I beg your pardon, this, this is actually 14. Okay, so it actually weighs 14 grams. So I have one molecule is 14 sorry one atom is 14 so in a molecule since I have two atoms it's gonna weigh 28 grams yep so a mole of nitrogen molecule weighs 28 grams because there are two of them in them and then a mole of hydrogen well each one weighs one gram well each mole of the atom weighs one gram so you're gonna have two grams here right so I just write this as my hydrogen and that's my nitrogen right a common question that crops up is oh why didn't I multiply by three well um, that wouldn't be right because I'm looking for the molecular mass of hydrogen and the formula for hydrogen is H2 not H6 right so if I multiply by three I would get six grams um, but that that would give me six grams would be the um, molecular mass of H6 but hydrogen isn't H6 it's, it's just H2 it so happens that in this case I have three of them right so if I change this number in front I, I don't want to change the molecular mass of um, hydrogen so I'm just gonna leave it as that and then finally I have ammonia 
which looks like that, and that's 14 grams. And every hydrogen is one gram. So if I add all that up, I'm gonna get 14 plus three, which is 17 grams for my ammonia. So basically what this equation is saying is, you know, a mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to give me two moles of ammonia. But that's really inconvenient, as we said, because um, you don't go tell someone, oh, make me two moles of ammonia, right? Um, they won't be able to count it. But instead, if you told them, um, you know, um, you make me a certain mass of ammonia and I would be able to do it, right? So this row here, what, what this row gives me is what we call the molecular masses of my reacting species, right, of a molecule of each. Now, because I have one mole of nitrogen, if I multiply the number of moles with the molecular mass, I'm going to get 28 grams of nitrogen. If I multiply every mole of hydrogen is 2 grams. So since I have 3 moles of that, I'll multiply those, I'm going to get 6 grams and every mole of ammonia is 17 grams. Since I have two of those, I'm going to get 34 grams. Yep. So what this equation is telling me is that if I take 28 grams of nitrogen and react it with 6 grams of hydrogen, I'm going to get 34 grams of ammonia. I notice that mass is indeed conserved because 28 plus 6 is 34, right? You can't have masses going missing for increasing or decreasing from one side of the equation to the other. So now if I were to go in the lab and someone were to tell me, oh, make me 34 grams of nitrogen, I can measure out, right, quite easily, 28 grams of, I'm sorry, 34 grams of ammonia. So I can measure out quite easily 28 grams of nitrogen, six grams of hydrogen, I can also measure that out quite easily, right, without having to count the individual molecules. And I can now make 34 grams of ammonia. Now one observation here is, um, let me give this a symbol. So molecular masses, I'm gonna call M with a little r, where the little r means relative. And we know why it's relative, because it's relative with respect to um, carbon. And that little M there just means molecular. Right, if it's an atom on its own, you may sometimes see it called AR instead, where A stands for, as you guessed it, atomic. Right, so that's just a notational um, detail. Right, it's being measured the same way. And the number of moles of something, I can give that a symbol as well. Let's let's call that M. Right, and this final row here where I get my reacting masses. We'll give that a symbol, we'll call that M. Right, so this one is moles. So based off of our observation, what did we do to get the masses? We took the mass of a mole, which is molecular mass or the molar mass, and we multiply it by the number of moles that will give us the masses. Right? So let's write a formula for that. Mass is number of moles times the mass of each mole. Right? So that, that should make pretty good common sense, right? Because if you, if you were to buy a packet of chocolates and that packet of chocolates weighed 200 grams, and if I were to buy three packets of chocolates, three times 200 grams is 600 grams. So the total mass for my three packets of chocolates would be 600 grams. Right, so we'll hold on to that formula and then um, we will use this to expand on our topic of stoichiometry in the next video.